Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Marketing Espionage Bootcamp. I'm Heather Lutze, and today we have a wonderful opportunity to speak to some of the, the real gurus in the search marketing and web space. And we are, gonna, we are so fortunate to be able to have um, these amazing experts. But first of all, I wanted to show you sort of some of my credentials. I think most of you already know this, but I just thought I would walk you through. You know, I finally launched this book. It took me a year and a half. This book, Marketing Espionage, would not leave me alone. Um, I, I had to write it. It would not leave me alone. And I don't know if every you've ever tried to write a book, it just gnaws at you and shows up in your head all the time. And you're like, all right, all right, you can come out now. Uh, so I've got my book now. I've worked for years in search marketing, and I absolutely love what I do. And I hope it shows based on my thought leadership and what I do for people. My husband calls that the hottie picture. What do you think, Jenna? I, I do love that picture. <laughs> this just makes you wonder, Heather. You're in your spy coat. Are you, you know? Right? <laughs> yeah, I won't even go there. <laughs> Let me introduce you to Gina Shrek. She's the CEO of Social Connects, and she does content marketing and social media services, managed services for clients. I highly recommend that you check her out. She is amazing and has helped me with all of my social media. She's also a keynote speaker and author, and her website is socialconnects.com. So, welcome, Gina. Thank you. It's so fun to be here. And again, I let, I apologize early for any background noise. I'm, I'm in a Panera Bread <laughs> um, store. Had an early morning downtown, so I'm excited to be here. Good. Well, I'm thrilled to have you, and thank you for taking time out. Uh, have a cinnamon roll for me, if you don't mind. Yeah, I know. Yeah. I, I mean, I wish they did table service. Came over to <laughs> Oops. They haven't. So for those of you who are on right now, I just want to kind of give a quick um, uh, flash forward to what we're going to do next. So our next speaker is Shep Hyken, uh, and then we have, of course, Paul from SEM Rush, and then we have Mike Roberts from SpyFu. So, so guys, I know this is four hours of content, but you know you can pop in and pop out. It's going to be the same login, and we're all going to record. We are recording this session, so you'll all get a recording after with the fact, too. All right, Gina, so let's talk a little bit about social media findability. When you go to Google and you search your name, the first part of my, of my webinar series is all about Googling yourself. And when you Google right. yourself, you see all different kinds of elements. Um, you see Facebook pages and LinkedIn profiles and Twitter accounts. Um, maybe we should Google you, Gina. What do you think? <laughs> yeah. Just don't <laughs> click images. Don't click images. No, I'm just teasing. Um, yeah. yeah. I mean, it is one of the first things I tips I give people that say, I have a really common name, so when you Google my name, lots of different people come up. Um, you can yeah. never find my content, and I say, well, then you need to create more content than the other people. You know, right. you just have to work a little harder, because creating content is key, whether it's social media content, blog content, articles, um, the more content you create, the easier it is your name, even if it's, you know, Ann Smith, is going to right. rise to the top. Well, here's something that's interesting is I think a lot of people don't think about Googling themselves. It's called ego surfing, which I think is hysterical. Oh, wait, um, I want to know who doesn't Google themselves. Right? But I think what they don't understand is maybe this, what they see here, is not necessarily what a news prospect might see. Correct. So the first part yeah, of the webinar cool. series that I'm going to be starting here on September 22nd is understanding spying on yourself which means right. how do I replicate how people search for me? So I just wanted to show a quick tool, Gina, and then we're gonna dive in to what we're seeing here with you. So guys, when you are in, I'm in Chrome right now, um, you want to go to the far right-hand side and you're gonna to go to this, let's call new incognito window. Now, if you're using um, uh, Firefox or Internet Explorer or whatever, those, uh, that's my husband called it Internet Explorer. Internet Explorer. Uh, yeah. Uh, you're going to want to go into new incognito, and what you see is you see in the theme of our presentation today, you see a spy guy. Now, this is not going to limit your localized listings. They're going to know where you are physically, but it strips out all of the personalized search. So whenever we Google ourselves, Google's like, you must really like yourself. I'm going to show you higher and higher in the search results. Right. So you don't get an accurate you don't get an accurate portrayal of how people see you from the outside in, right? That's right. So now I'm going to search for you. Or I love when people say they type in their company name and they go, "I'm I rank number one." Right. <laughs> I, go, well, I would hope so. Right. <laughs> Put your name in there. 
But you also have an interesting issue with spelling of your last name. How have you overcome yeah. that, Gina? I, um, it's interesting because Shrek, uh, people usually have it spelled like the movie or they spell it S-H-R-E-K. So I have a lot of different things where I've, you, I've captured those um, words and I also use those keywords occasionally, even misspelling my own name in uh, areas for that reason. Yeah. So yeah, here, you also are identified with this, the Shrek spelling. Exactly. So. I should just change my name to Fiona and it would be so much easier. I don't know. Um, I don't know if green's your color, so... <laughs> so let's take a look at search results Gina so here we've got you know I'm always curious so for me it's all about page one findability the first part of that is how do people see you your name your business so when people hire you Gina do they typically go for social connects is that what they search for or do they yeah. know you first and then social connects second they usually neither they I mean people that are looking for they usually I mean, if they know the company name and they know my name, they're going to find me. But if they're looking for um, social media marketing help or um, help with social media or social media coaching, you know, you have to think of what would the consumer type in. And then, you know, those become those keywords like you always teach is, you know, what are the keywords that people actually search for? Not just words that you think are your keywords. Because right. a lot of things are very different. But. Yeah. So let's look at your search results here. So when we're thinking about this, this is really brand reputation, Gina. You know, we're trying to yeah. make sure there's no nastiness here. You know, True. you're not going to make everyone happy. You're going to have employees that leave that are upset. I, I, I'm always amazed at what shows up here. And so are my clients. They're like, really? So here we see your website. And here we see your Hire Gina page, which is always helpful. Right. And then we see another internal page here as well for social yeah. media speakers. So that's great. Here we have all of your history of your haircuts. So it's <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> this is my share, my share page. Yeah. Uh, yes, yes. We get all the Gina's hair hairstyles yeah. there. Many styles of Gina Shrek. Yes. Although I don't see any of my brunette days. Red. I had red under here. Remember? Oh yeah, I remember that. Yeah. Okay, Gina, so how do I get, so here we see, this is what we're here really talking about, right? Is how do I get social media sites to rank under my name? Right. So tell me a little bit about your strategy. So this is Gina Shrek, not Social Connects. I do have both. I have um, on, on everything, on every social platform we have our company, um, because we have someone on our team that manages all of our company content. So at Social Connects, um, LinkedIn, a Social Connects page, Facebook, we have a Social Connects page. Um, Twitter, we have a social connects page, Snapchat. We don't have a social connects account yet. I do have a personal one. Um, Instagram, we have both. And, and that's just because our company social connects is very different. I mean, it's not me. It's, you know, we have 18 people and we manage social media for other companies. So, but I've always maintained my own because, you know, you still have your own personal brand. Right. And I think these days, no matter where you work, um, you know, you, you're putting out content to show you are a thought leader, an expert in your area. Right. So to me, I think that's important um, to separate yourself out. Um, if you are really a, that thought leader and you're putting content out, you should have your own account. So that's that's kind of my philosophy on that. And I I put out tons of content. I mean, I'm always writing content. I I, I mean, I don't blog as often as I wish I could blog every day. And I just need to start you know making more time to do that. But because the more content you put out on your website, obviously. Right. You know, you're using those keywords that you want to be found with, and the more you can do that, um, the higher your rankings, and then you share all that blog content on your social media sites, and so again, the more content with your keywords, um, you're just going to get higher rankings, and social does help you get found, and um, you know, people always say, oh, social doesn't really send traffic to my site, well, then you're not doing it right, because you should be pulling people, and I always talk about this um, content universe you know your your website is your core your sun and then your planets around the sun are bigger pieces of content so they might be infographics and could be blog content it could be um, uh, webinars it could be white papers those are all big pieces of content that now you use social media as the stars to right. drive people to those bigger pieces of content to the planets so if you're creating those planets then social sends people to those planets because people do click on links to go read um, more of that content. Well, what's interesting is um, I just came back from a week long training with some of the best nerds in the industry, uh, search engine optimization nerds and Google was there and everyone's like, Ooh, Google's there. But one of the big thing was there's an algorithmic equation that's called buzz, B-U-Z-Z. -Z. 
And buzz is actually directly related to your social engagement. So right. you'll have a website, you will blog, and you will socially engage. And I'm not going to rank you if you don't have those three elements. I mean, Google search results are the most important, valuable asset to Google. And I think it's important to understand that social media is not just something you may or may, or may not do. It is really, I think, elevated to a point, Gina, that it is a requirement, it's at least by Google. Maybe not by you or your business <laughs> owner, right? But it is definitely a buzz ranking signal for Google. And, and when, see, we throw the thing of use social media, we should be doing social media. I think the thing we have to be careful of is just throwing content out there randomly is not using that tool wisely because you end up um, wasting a lot of time. If you put together a strategy of, okay, what is my goal on this platform? It's to tell stories through pictures. So on Instagram, perhaps then looking at, okay, what are our branding guidelines? How do we want people to see our image? What's our fonts? What, what are our colors? So that we start looking at that brand coming together on, on right. Facebook and Twitter. It's like, we want to make sure that we're sharing links and we want to, um, you know, be able to get people to come to these bigger pieces of content. So I take all of my blog posts. I always say you need a uh, content inventory and make a list of every blog post you've ever written, every article you have out there. What's the link to it? What's the, the um, you know, little tagline post that you would have. And then I would say, even then um, create a graphic that goes with that blog post. So now I've got a graphic, I've got the headline, I've got the link. Now keep those in circulation because you're right. You're being ranked by how much content that's focused on your industry because that's another thing I see people put out lots of content it's so random you don't even know what they do you don't know what are they an expert in I can't tell when I look at their content so make sure that it stays somewhat focused it doesn't have to be so focused that you're boring mm -hmm. um, you know show personality but also stay focused I always say a good audit is go look at one page of your Twitter post or go look at your Facebook page and and don't scroll too far can somebody tell what you do, how they could hire you if they looked at that. Would they know what you're an expert in? Right, and I can see your tw your Twitter account right here, and I can see you just posted 35 minutes ago. That's right. If, uh, that's you know, right. If, if it says three years ago, that's probably that's probably not going to be the best example of your thought leadership. Are you yeah. three years old to Google? I mean, they really do want to index thought leaders, yeah, and not yeah. posers or salesmen. And I think well, that's a big thing that people don't quite understand. So many people start accounts before they have a strategy and then they become abandoned buildings. You know, these accounts are sitting out there abandoned uh, because nobody thought through, oh, someone else actually posts something every day. Um, you know, they don't think through that. And so they post haphazardly and they'll have like one or two posts and then it's six months before they post again. So yeah, make sure you think through who's going to actually do this and how much time does it take and, um, and who's writing the content. <laughs> right. And a lot of times, see, I see some bureaus here that are also ranking for your name. Right. And I see this a lot with business owners where they have competitors show up here. And this is not a bad thing for you because they're out there, you know, supporting Hiring. your brand. Right. But if you see something, so everyone, if you Google yourself, make sure you're incognito. Remember, that's coming over here and you go into this new incognito window right here. And you're going to see a little spy guy in the corner. So now you're seeing an unbiased search result. So for Gina, these are her brand reputation management. Your, your brand insurance policy is really right here. Now, if we go to Gina's images, again, we see a lovely history of your haircuts. And, outfits. Yeah, we do. and you see some people, you're like, who is this person? That? I know, right? Who's that? But it could be somebody that I had on one of my shows. Yeah. Um, what's it, yeah. What's so it, a lot of. Sorry, Gina. Uh, so this is actually a blog post that you were featured on. Um, what is that? What is that one? Eminem Entertainment Blog dot com. Um, MMP. MMP. Okay. So yeah. Here, yeah. And so here's another blog post, and we don't even get to your your picture until the third image in. Now people will will click on these images, but what people don't understand is these images can come from social media. They can come from blogs. And we can True. stockpile this so that it really represents your brand too, Gina. Yeah. Well, and it is interesting because that's one thing I always, I used to teach my kids all the time is you need to Google yourself and look at images that you were tagged in because a lot of times you're tagged in an image um, that's not you. Uh, it might be, you know, an event that you weren't even 
at and right. somebody tagged you in it, and it's going to show up in a Google search history. So if you have teenagers, you know, that's always important when they're out there looking for jobs. Yeah. Uh, but as, an, as a person in the, you know, in the work environment, you want to look at where am I showing up and are they in legit places? Um, again, it, it's not necessarily that you can remove them. You might be able to go to a site and ask them to remove um, things. I had, a, I had a bureau that actually was listing me and it wasn't one that, and come to find out, they were actually, I think, buying my name. They were buying different people's names so that like when somebody searched my name, I would come up on their thing first. And, um, or at least they were buying that keyword. So the interesting was I asked them to take, because I didn't really get a lot of work from that bureau and I didn't want to, that wasn't a type of bureau that I wanted to work through. So I asked them to remove my profile um, from their website. So you can ask to be removed from sites, but a lot of times the key is you just have to put out more new content to push that old one down. Right, exactly, exactly. So if you don't like what comes up when you Google yourself, you need to say, you know what, one of my key priorities is going to be making sure that all the content I create, yep. it, at least some of it is, is optimized for my name or my company name. Yeah, and I don't um, typically write content and have my, I'll have my bio in there on our site, but um, a lot of the stuff I'm writing is for Social Connects, is for our site or for DIY Social that we have a coaching program. And so it's, you know, it's different. Um, yeah. Yeah, what I think is when you switch from people who know you to people who do not know you, right? Correct. Um, yeah. So, because oh, we forgot to talk about video too. So these are all coming from where? So we have, looks like we have the first one is your, clearly your YouTube channel. And then we have a speaker. Right. Zero. That's your old Getting Geeky, right? From 2009. Um, yeah. Yeah. And then we have, of course, 2013, 2015, 14. So people can see that you've been a thought leader in this space for a long time. Look at the wrinkles. Do you see these wrinkles? I Social see, media. I, see that. I have the blur setting <laughs> turned on, Gina. So you look just soft focus. If you rub, if you rub cold cream on the lens <laughs> of the camera, I think that's another way to so, do that. Yeah. So it, it, what's interesting to me, Gina, is that the three ways people will search for someone on, on Google, of course, is, is organic is the first way. But 40% right. of all traffic is coming in from mobile devices into Google, which I think is unbelievable. Yeah, it is. And the images, a lot of people are like, well, why do these images come up? Well, because they're the most relevant to your name. Um, yeah. Yeah. Um, so if yeah. I think and I, I think, again, the more often you put out content, um, you know, the more your site's going to rank um, for those words because you're just constantly putting out new stuff. Right. And, you know, I'm always looking at who's, who's coming up in those rankings and look at how much content they're putting out. And it's not that, it's not that you, well, sometimes, and you know this, you know, sometimes your main keyword is so crowded, you're going to have to look at some of those other keywords that you want to be found by to try to get in that space because maybe like social media, it's crazy competitive. One of the most competitive spaces like SEO. Um, yeah. So what would be a keyword, Gina, that if I didn't know you or your name or your brand, what would you want me to Google to find you? I mean, a lot of times it's social media managed services, um, and we get business from people just looking for um, someone to help them with their social media, managing all of their social media and social marketing and their blogging and their newsletters. So sometimes it's, you know, someone to help with my blogging, someone to help with um, that. And so, yeah, it's just constantly, but most people find us because they're looking on social channels. Right. So that's other interesting we're yeah. on social media more and they'll go to Twitter and they'll be on LinkedIn and they see our content there and they come to our site from our content so that content is drawing people to the website even you know and then they might go and do a search but a lot of people tell me well I was on Twitter and I saw this post or I was on LinkedIn and I read your post and so to me that's where blogging is so critical to you know, your findability is people will find your content, whether it's through a Google search, whether it's through a social post, and they're drawn to the content, and then they're going to go dig further. Right. Uh, One thing is, you know, and social media managed services, I'm sure, is a very competitive. Oh, phrase. so competitive. Phrase. Yeah. So a lot of my clients are like, well, I can never achieve first page ranking under these highly competitive phrases. So what I suggest is scroll all the way to the bottom, and you'll see right here, are a bunch of other suggestions that go deeper into that concept. 
So if you're scratching your head going, what should my next blog post be? I can't, right. I can't, I can't compete under social media management services. Well, maybe you do social media management company for small business or you do something right. along those lines. Talk about pricing, talk about being an agency um, and also packages. Look at that, Gina. People are actually looking for packages. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. And that would be a present from Tiffany in my mind. Would be that. I'm, I'm surprised it doesn't say social media services for free because that's what people really are looking for. <laughs> yeah, uh, we don't really want to be findable. Findable. Yeah, we don't want to be findable in that one. But, um, but yeah, I mean, it's it's looking it's looking for like you're saying ideas on what to blog next for. Um, you know, for our clients, we'll go in and type in their their. Um, a question I'm always about you should be answering questions so I look at what are the top questions that people ask and then write blog posts to answer those questions yeah. and then even type in when you start typing that question Google gives you more suggestions and then you go oh that would be a great social media post but I look at first what's the planet let's create a blog content or an infographic or um, you know, let's do a, a, a tip sheet on that question right and then use social media to drive people to that tip sheet they download it now I have their email because to me social should be always looking at how do I turn a like into a lead how do I take social and drive people to my website so that I capture their email address well you know that to me is a big piece of being not only findable but sustainable right. because you know people go to your website they read your blog post they may never return to your website so if you don't capture their email address when they're on your website um, you, it's a missed opportunity. So social media should drive them to your blog post, but then there should be something there that says, download our 10 tips to do such and such. They right. download that, you capture their email address, and now you've got a lead to follow up with, to market to. Um, and that's another thing I think people miss with social, is they see social as this silo, throw a bunch of posts out there, surely it's gonna convert. Right. Um, you know, you have to do some things um, to, to convert that like into a lead and that goes back to the planets create those planets draw people in capture their email address now you market to them um, a little differently right I'm always interested you know when you type in what is you know yeah Google what is, is social media yeah, yeah Google is always very happy to give you the questions that people put into Google right you know and and, great yeah. blog posts yeah so it's like so anyone who's on the call I mean think about what kinds of questions that can you answer like right. so I could do what is SEO right and then you're gonna get a bunch of interesting feedback around that now it's gonna be incredibly hard for me to rank for that but I can right. and I can take a look look I can I can go deeper or I can just search for that and then I can go and I still go all the way to the bottom here's what I like to let me make that bigger Here's where I get my blogging inspiration is I, I will never rank for the word what is SEO. It's not going to happen. But I can say what is SEO WordPress or what is SEO and how does it work? You know, if, if I optimize my blog post, we train this in our webinar series is if I know exactly what people are looking for, I just have to make sure I use that phrase in my images, all across my content, and bam, I'm, I'm findable. Right. I'm curious, the audience, people that are on right now, go in the chat, little bubble at the bottom, and chat in there. If you are not blogging consistently, I'm curious, what is your number one reason? Is it, well, I'm not going to say is it. Let me just see. Um, throw that in the chat area. What, what's your number one you. uh, The biggest thing I hear, Gina, is time. Yeah. Time, yeah. Is I don't know what to write about. Right. So when you get like, and, and you and I, I don't know about you, but I get sick and tired of talking about SEO sometimes, you know, and I'm like, I have been doing this for 15 years. What is it? What's left for me to talk about? And that, and it's actually, cause I did a, a blog post about go back to the basics and state the obvious. Sometimes we think everybody already knows that I've already written about it. I've already talked about it. Um, providing creative content and time. Yeah. Haley and Kevin, you know, yeah, that's why I keep saying, what are the questions like every time I get a question when somebody calls me on the phone and they ask me a question or I get an email and it says you know I'm stuck can you help me with this I have this question one of our clients asks the question I immediately write that question down as a blog topic as well right. because answering questions are great because people type those questions into Google you want your question you want your answer to come up as a result right. of their searching for that question um, content and time yeah finding time to me it's easier if I have a topic I can sit down and write out write a blog post in a couple hours 
Um, but when I'm um, not, I'm, I'm kind of floundering on the topics, it's harder. So that's why I just, just keeping a list and asking other people on your team, what are questions that we tend to get all the time? Yeah. And creating those. Well, and Google's really demanding. Now, it's not just about keyword stuffing, which I think a lot of people associate with with search engine marketing. Right. But, and now the, the, this, this Google training, so I spoke at PubCon at the end of last year, and a big part of the talk was, if you are a content matter expert in a specific field like DIY social media, and I, I type that in and I see those drop downs or I scroll all the way to the bottom, Google actually expects for you to reference some of those items so True. that they know that you're connected with what's going on in that thought space. If right. And that can, that can help so much with blogging. You know, put anything in there and you're going to be, you know, you're going to get great ideas for what to add to your blogs. Yeah, so those of you saying, you know, identifying good topics or, um, you know, just trying to think of something, you could take yeah. one question, type that in Google and see the other ones that come up that are related, you know, related to that. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so, so, Gina, let's jump over to how do I get become findable in Twitter? So if I, you know, what do you think is the, if, if I was a business owner and I had to focus on, um, maybe three or four social sites. I mean, there's so many now, Gina. How does a business decide which social they should really commit to? I mean, to me, it goes back to where are your customers, where are your customers? I mean, well, I say that and then I'm like, well, and on Facebook, it's if you plan on advertising, you need to have a Facebook page, not a pro, well, you have to have a profile to create a page, but uh, a page is important because you can advertise, you have analytics, you, you have some um, data there that you don't get, and you can schedule content in Facebook business page, you can't on a personal. So to me, it's what, you know, what are your goals on social, and then where are your customers? And if you're not sure, it'd be a really easy thing to, to do a survey of your customers and start seeing, um, you know, where are they? Where do they, what's their number one social site that they tend to hang out on? And right. And then, and then again, I always say people will find you because they find your content um, through hashtags. To me, hashtags on Twitter and Instagram are critical. Uh, and then using those because people don't know who you are, but they'll click on a hashtag and they'll find more content. And then I always say the more there is a direct link to frequency and growth of your account. The right. more content you put out, the more followers you get because your content starts spreading and people will retweet it and you know you get more followers just because you put out lots of content. Um, well, you have quite a lot of followers, almost 80,000 followers. Did you ever think you'd be so so popular, Gina? <laughs> yeah, I would say that's one thing. Number of followers does never never equal <laughs> equals popularity. Right. Um, but it just means, you know, it, if you're consistent in the content you put out, people see you as a source of, of information then they're gonna, I wanna follow that person. Mm -hmm. um, so I think, again, the consistency and frequency will help grow that number faster than anything else. It, well, aside from buying naked spammers, which you can do for $5, but um, you know, nobody wants <laughs> nobody wants that. And, and again, I look at Twitter as, a, well, some of you are going, actually, that might be what you want. Um, but, you know, Twitter, I get a lot of web traffic from Twitter. So using your Google Analytics, is another key piece of looking at your social media and where you should be. We have a, a great example. We have a client who really thought Twitter was a big piece of his um, his company's marketing, and we looked at Google Analytics and we look at revenue generated from different social sites. Um, and Pinterest ranked above anything else, and Twitter was his lowest. Oh, interesting. Number lowest account um, below every other social site so we said you know here we were spending so much effort on building his social audience and putting out all this content hardly any traffic coming from Twitter and no sales coming from Twitter so we shifted the, the um, strategy and we said we need to spend more time engaging with people on Pinterest and then Facebook was the second uh, revenue generator so you know, looking at your analytics, where where's your traffic coming from? Where's revenue coming from? If you can track revenue, um, that to me starts telling me where I need to spend more time. Right. Gotcha. Now, yeah. so I, I want everyone on the call. It, my, my book is available for free on my app. If anyone wants to spend four or five hours, yeah, no, that was not available yet. I mean, that is available on Amazon. But uh, my second book, Social I'm Media Content. Now, my second book, Thumbonomics, actually has a whole chapter on each social media site and how to treat it like a search engine. 
So Gina, if I don't know who you are, I've never met you, I've never heard of you, people need to replicate this. So, so you know, when I, if I wanna optimize, how do I decide what handle should I, I mean, you, you could have gotten DIY SEO, or you could get your name, or do you do both? I mean, how do you balance the findability with your own brand? See, there's there's a debatable topic because I I needed my name because number one, I don't want someone else taking my name, right. um, and I I've had people do that on Facebook and Twitter, which is just weird. Like what? Like why are they trying to create a fake account? But um, somebody had Gina underscore Shrek, and I was like, okay, that's weird, and it wasn't me, and it wasn't a real person. So I I always say grab your name, grab your business name. Which you always tell people get those accounts whether you're going to use them or not get them you don't have to publish a page like on facebook grab the page and don't publish it yet um right right oh i again i have both i have social connects and i have gina shrek and it's because we put out a lot of content we want people knowing the, the name yeah so i i didn't do the whole thing and i know people on linkedin who have done like gina shrek social media speaker and they, their account got blackballed um, and they actually got shut down um, for six months where people couldn't find them doing a search and this was a very prominent LinkedIn person. Um, what about these though Gina? I mean it's clearly this this strategy still works. Yeah, oh yeah 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 well and you can change your URL your URL for Twitter does not have to be the same as your uh, yeah username so you can you can have different um, usernames and different URLs. Um, like I could have Gina Shrek and then my, my, where you see it in bold, Gina Shrek, that could be social media expert. And then at Gina Shrek could be the. Um, okay, yeah. So, yeah, I think it's important that we understand and do the work to figure out if I don't know you, how do you, how would you like to be findable, Gina? If I, I look at my bio and I play with my bio a lot, I'll, yeah. I'll, uh, tweak the keywords in my bio, content marketing, digital marketing, social media marketing. I'll change those things around in there to see as well as which one tends to draw uh, more. And now, I mean, I'm kind of out of spot. I'm not really trying to grow my Twitter following. I'm trying to get more people clicking on links that I share to become leads is more of my focus. And so I'm looking at how much traffic, how many people um, on my list came from Twitter, on my mailing list, how many came from Facebook, on my mailing list, how many, so I look at that uh, because I'm, I think my mailing list is more valuable than my Twitter account. Um, but I also know that the more people that find me on Twitter will find my content and find those lead magnets. Right. Um, so remember, also, let's talk a little bit about hashtags, because I know that a lot of people are incredibly confused about hashtags. And I've seen hashtags in Facebook. I've seen hashtags in Instagram. I see hashtags everywhere. But where, first of all, what is a hashtag? And how, if you're a non-technical business owner, how can you really use them and not look embarrassing? Because some people use them <laughs> incorrectly. And, you know, you, you well, you show your hands. Yeah, my twenty-year-old daughter. I embarrass all the time because I'll say hashtag treat yourself um, to her, and um, suns out, guns out is one of my favorite hashtags when I'm working out because you know these guns they're not allowed in some buildings. But, um, <laughs> but yeah, on Twitter, hashtags become a search tool, so I can click on a hashtag and it'll take me to more content that other people have written, so it'll curate content for me as the searcher. Right. Um, if I want to be found in a certain thing, I could do and, and have my content found using a hashtag. People will still find you on Twitter even if you don't use hashtags though. It, it helps, but you don't want to use more than one or two hashtags on Twitter. Instagram, you, the more hashtags, and there is a limit, but usually 11 to 15 hashtags on Instagram is the sweet spot. And the reason is wow. people can't find you any other way so on Instagram the more people will click on sums out guns out if they want to see other um, they won't see my pictures but they'll see other fitness buff people um, and then so I use on, on um, Instagram I use a, a probably 11 to 20 hashtags on almost every post and I get I get more followers because of the hashtags because I know when people are searching they're not finding unless again unless they know my name they're not gonna right. find so right hashtags are more important on Instagram 
Instagram on our hashtags on Facebook are similar to Twitter where I can click on a hashtag. It'll curate content around that. Um, oh, there's where I was this morning, that Fit, Fit 36. We had a photo shoot for one of our clients. Oh, wow. That's great. <laughs> um, there, yeah, we were taking pictures and had Fox News down here doing a, a story on them. And um, so we did a Facebook Live, which to me, if you're on social media and you have a Facebook page, um, you need to be doing Facebook Lives because that's right now the best thing you can do to get uh, reach for your brand. And um, we did a Facebook Live from there. But um, yeah, Facebook, people still don't really use hashtags as much as other platforms, but they are still, they do work. I can click yeah. on it, it'll curate. So a lot of people I don't think understand how, how hashtags function. So let's just say I don't know who Fuza is or whoever that is, right? Um, yeah. And I type in DIY SEO, right? Now I get anyone who puts this hashtag exactly. in, their t in their tweet. And now I'm to other people's content a lot of times. Right, but it's all customized to what I want. Right, as a searcher. Yeah, yeah it's exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Now, Gina, what do you think about what's one? So you think Facebook business page for a business on Facebook? Um, see, Jumping over to Facebook, I'm sorry. No. So Facebook to me, um, there's, there's kind of a, it depends on how, how your business is set up. To me, a Facebook group is a great yeah. group right now. Facebook will change, I'm sure. But right now, when you're in a Facebook group, you see every post that goes out on that Facebook group. You see, you get a notification for every post. On Facebook business page, not so much. You don't see every post that um, somebody, you know, posts on their Facebook business page because there's so much content. Facebook uses the algorithm to show you specific pieces of content they think you'll be interested in. Right. And Pay to have more people see that, but I still think as a business you have to you have to have a presence there because Facebook is a good search tool for people. People will do searches on right. Facebook, and so you you need to have a presence there. But I always tell people, don't worry if you don't have a hundred thousand fans, and don't worry if two people engage with you. You're really like we use our Facebook page for specific ad campaigns that drive people to landing pages to again convert into leads right and you don't all you have to have is a business page for that you don't have to have people seeing your post so there's a strategy to using a Facebook page a group is really great if you have a reason to get people into a group realtors a really smart tool for realtors any local business creating a local page where you share some fun local content um, right in a group and that that's actually a really smart strategy right now your personal profile is your personal profile you know it's it's where you I use my for personal and professional networking I don't put a lot of business stuff there because my friends and family don't need you know I don't want to have them hate me <laughs> so what's sort of the outlier so is Pinterest the so I'm sorry let's go back for a second so you have a Facebook personalized page and you have a Facebook business group now, how do you treat them differently, Gina? Is it, do you talk about your business on both or you try to separate and only talk personal, here's what I'm doing in my life, and then separate? So a lot, of, I get a lot of questions about how do I separate my own personal activity from my profile. activity? Yeah, yeah and, and you do want a personal profile because to set up the page correctly, a business page, you should start with a personal profile, then create a business page. And the reason is Facebook can track who did activities on your business page through that if you don't connect it to a personal profile you are limited you won't show up in searches you can't perform searches um, there's certain things that Facebook does not allow you to do if you don't set it up that way right. so right. some businesses are too paranoid to connect it to a personal profile um, and so they're limited on the functions that their page can do so the correct way create a personal profile have a business page I have admins on our business page that can manage the page and then um, and so my personal profile I share kind of what's going on in my life I don't share any personal things that um, I wouldn't mind if it was on the paper front page paper tomorrow um, so I don't share I don't, I'm not the TMI person but I'm gonna share you know went hiking this weekend or we were up in Vail this you know and I share pictures of events and things and then I will let people know hey I, I there's a Facebook live going on um, join us here and I'll put a link or 
we're sharing this blog content here. I'll put a link to our business page. And I do that occasionally. And then a business group is really where the, the strategy is you build your group. And like you use it, your group after a class, you have a, they're put into a group so they can share their uh, coursework. And to me, that's a good way for a group to be used, or again, if I want to share local content and get um, do surveys, or I want to ask my group um, what type of information they want from us, new product information. But I'm not trying to sell to them in the group. I'm trying to build the relationships in the group, and so it's different. Um, yeah, I think it's a, it's a very complicated, especially if you're a thought leader or a professional speaker or author, where right. people know your name and they also know. Uh, you potentially know your brand or they know one and not the other. That's right. Um, yeah. So I hear a lot of people, I'm obsessed with Pinterest, just a full disclosure. <laughs> I don't know why I have a thousand people following me on Pinterest because I just <laughs> what I love. Gina, explain what Pinterest is and, and how does it, how does it factor in to a business? Pinterest is Hotel California. You can check in anytime you'd like but you will never leave. Um, it sucks you in. <laughs> you know, Pinterest really is not a, I don't see it as a social media platform. I see it as a search engine. Um, Pinterest is a search engine. I search for recipes. I search for boots. I search for, um, I search for resources on, um, you know, buying a real estate, buying real estate. I go in there and I search for it and I can find articles and whatever I'm looking for, I'll find it on Pinterest. So to me, it's used as a search engine. So I say, um, and if you have a product you can sell, uh, a physical product, you need to be on Pinterest because like we have clients that we do buyable pins and you can just click and purchase right from Pinterest. And um, so you could do the same thing on Facebook now and Instagram. And right. again, looking at how do I, how do I convert to sales, it's always the key. Um, right. And Pinterest isn't about relationship. I never follow people on Pinterest because I, I like who they are. I follow people because they share cool pictures and cool stuff and helpful information. So again, it goes back to pumping out lots of content and graphics are more important in Pinterest right. because you really have to have um, beautiful graphics on Pinterest. So having someone that can do that for you, if you're not that person, don't just be putting average um, images because they're not going to get traction. Right, right. Well, and I always feel I always find it really interesting is you have to think of Pinterest as a search engine. So it, it, you know, for me, I'm obsessed with SEO phrases. So what I do is I when I I'll Google the phrase that I'm interested in. Right. And then I will carefully take a look at these categories. So if you guys are thinking of ideas, what to tweet on, what to talk about, SEO or Etsy, SEO experts, SEO marketing, what is SEO? Right. SEO for beginners, SEO for, I got a little bit of information on keywords, uh, WordPress, right? So a lot of people are like, I don't know what to blog about. I don't know what to socialize about. Do not beat yourself up. Yeah. You know, use the tools that Google is giving you or Pinterest is giving you so that when someone searches for this, so let's just say they search for uh, DIY social media, you need to start creating images or sharing images that and you'll see here that social media is inside of all of these all, all these tags, all these images. Right. So Gina, yeah. if, if Social Connects put this out, right, and I clicked on it, you know, now I'm going to click on this. Oh, it's like, oh, that's a beautiful picture. And that should take you to a website where they capture your lead. Let's see like where it goes. Let's see know? where it goes. Yeah. Because to me, it's kind of a weird thing. Whenever you have content that's great, that doesn't take me anywhere else. It's kind of like you just left them, um, left them on Facebook, left them on Twitter, yeah. left them on Pinterest. But do you see how great this is it's now? Seen. I was searching for yeah. SEO, right? Day by SEO. Now I can say I've got a blog at, and now I can see that I can sign up for workshops and webinars and tutorials. That's the ideal, I think, Pinterest engagement or really any That's social right. engagement. Yeah, is it should take you somewhere. Don't, you know, at the end of every blog post, what's your call to action? Are you capturing a lead? Is there a, a you know, a lead magnet at the bottom of every blog post? Um, or at least something that you want them to go and do. So it's just not leaving people. So, you know, social is great because you connect with people, but then don't just leave them on that post. Take them to right. that next step. And, and at, you know, I'm always saying at the bottom of a blog post, what, what are we doing here? What's, how are we ending the blog post? What are, where are we taking people? What are we giving right. people? 
if they like that content, what's the next piece we should offer? And then offer them something that they can download because now you have their email address. And to me, what's great about that whole series um, is you can target, like a woman I was just speaking with, she said, I target both young moms who are, you know, they're new, the moms are busy, they don't have time to work out or be in, you know, back get, take care of their health. And then I also target older, um, she targets women, and she said who are empty nesters and who have lots of time, but they also want to take care of themselves. I said, well, create two pieces of content. Right. One was, you know, here are 25 tips every new mom should, should have or do. And this one, 25 tips, um, an empty nester would want to make sure they're doing. Now, whoever downloads those, you've already pre-qualified. You know what lists they go into. They should take them into two separate mailing lists. And so now I've used social media to ask them the question that drives them to, you know. So, and then I can share that piece of content on Pinterest, on Twitter, on Facebook. Yeah. And Instagram, you know, a lot of people are like, well, how does Instagram relate to my business? So yeah. is, there, is there some platforms that you're like, you know what, this just does not apply to us. Yes. It's not a good yes. use of our time. Yes. Is, there is, are some companies that just should not be there. Are, I've met some that shouldn't <laughs> be on social media because I go, you're not social offline. Um, and, you know, so I won't go on down that tangent. But right. Instagram, you have to be able to share real pictures. Um, and it's hard because – it was interesting because that was one of the reasons we went down and did this photo shoot this morning with this client is we needed we, stock photos will only take you so far. Instagram, we're not people aren't on Instagram to look at stock photos. They're right. on Instagram to see the behind the scenes, the real, you know, what's going on with your team. Who are you, who are your team members? Yes, some quotes and fun things in there mixed in are great, but if all you have is stock images and no real pictures, right. it's hard. Instagram's probably not your platform. And if your demographic is not under the age of you know, 40, Instagram is getting a little older, but it's still a younger platform. So, you know, knowing who the demographic is and are your clients there? If they're not there, don't waste time and energy. Grab the URL so that you have your name mm -hmm. uh, because things will change. But um, create the account and, and keep it unpublished so that you, um, you know, you're not spending time there because you're probably not going to get a return. Right. I mean, you can certainly, what do you think about the naming convention of accounts at Instagram? Because I know a lot of people, you know, they want you want, I mean, Instagram, although people may not search a lot in Instagram, does yeah. it help to have this as part of your strategy? It can't hurt. People on Instagram are kind of like Pinterest. They're looking at the images and the content. If you share cool content on Instagram, I want to follow you. If you, right. if you share really cool pictures, I'm going to follow you. If, if you shared one great piece of content and I went and looked at your profile and it was all sales, just junk, um, I'm not going to follow your account. I mean, I want to see beautiful images like Pinterest. I want to see cool right. content. If it's not cool and helpful, I'm not going to follow it. I, I might like that one picture that I just saw. Right, you know, right. One was good, but the rest, there are some brands out there that are showing images that I just find repulsive. And I'm like, I, I would never follow this. Um, so, you know, you have to look at, if Instagram is about the story of the story of your brand told through great pictures and right. you have to be able to, to come up with a lot of great pictures. Right. So, I tell people go on photo hikes where you just take your camera and you walk around your building. If you, if you know, I love a, photo hikes, go on a photo hike and whether it's downtown <laughs> in the city and take pictures of signs and funny signs and numbers on buildings and right. cool right. doors because you can always come up with posts or a cool picture. Um, so, you know, if you spent a couple hours and get a, some friends together and do a photo hike, I would love to do one downtown Denver, start at Union Station, um, and just look for cool shots that then you could use as overlays for things and, um, or backgrounds for, right. for but yeah, Instagram's great. And, you know, then you go down the path of Snapchat, you're like, oh, just help me. I've been on Snapchat for a couple of years only to torture my children. Um, I know I have to text my son. I had to learn Snapchat just so I could get a hold of my son. That's funny. He, he's yeah. like, Mom, by the time you figure it out, we're long gone, he says. Well, to me. We, have, we have two clients using Snapchat, and it's, um, it's interesting because their demographic is not there. And I told them, I, you know, let's look at the reasons why we want to spend time there. Um, but they wanted to look 
their, their image is they focus on interior design that's high tech. And so they wanted to be that kind of high tech. Um, so I said, let's create some geo filters. And so we created some cool geo filters that when people were in their building on tours, yeah. they could, um, they could check in, but really the people who are using it are their employees. So, but at least it's getting their brand name out there through right. the snap, but they don't have their customers using Snapchat. So, you know, yeah. well, I think it's important too, is that, you know, pick a couple social profiles and do them well. You know, yeah. but then when I say from a brand protection standpoint, make sure you go and buy every single social, not buy, but set up, you know, set up everything from Snapchat to Vine to anything you've ever even heard of and just hold on to it. Is that what you recommend? Yeah. Always. I mean, I, I always say go and get your, your domain because someone will grab it and then that site will take off. I mean, look at right now, Pokemon Go, you know, right now I'm, I laugh because this client this morning it's a fitness account it's a franchise and so they're talking about making it a pokemon go you know place and we found one today we were laughing because we found a pokemon um at their studio and it's not that they're not there yet but yeah. could you create an account and keep your name sure you know <laughs> yeah. yeah well let's take some questions gina um guys you know gina is a wealth of knowledge and and you'd be you'd be remiss and not not using her time and ask her some questions. So get on chat and let's let's ask let's ask some questions of Gina and or if you have one for me, whatever whatever serves you the best. Um, yeah, throw some questions out. Yeah, let's go ahead and do that because I want to make sure that people get their questions answered. Um, and while we're waiting for them to text, well, tell me a little bit about your YouTube strategy. Um, you know, YouTube is the number two search engine on the internet. People love right. to search in YouTube. So. What has been your uh, people love around that? Yeah, to me, again, go back to take all those top 10 questions that you say uh, clients ask or potential clients ask. What are those top questions, the FAQs? Create videos to answer every one of those. And then we always take every video and we transcribe it. And then we upload that transcription document in the back end of oh. YouTube as the closed caption. Because yeah. Google, will tr Google will try to to um, transcribe your videos and they a lot of times don't understand you mm -hmm. so uh, we we have it transcribed upload that and that becomes good SEO juice in there and then make sure you use that description area to put links to your site um, full description with keywords use lots of tags in your YouTube videos um, because again it's it's a great tool for um, people finding you and on, on anything we're doing with clients we go through every one of their videos and add tags and add the descriptions are usually missing and then at the end of your video do you have something that takes them to the next call to action so right. uh, looking right. at content like that is just you know again video people love video it's so it's so it, you know video by itself is just super viral I mean it just it, it pulls in you know and it just really captures you yeah so let's see um, what are your so social connects knx and guys we're still waiting we have a, make sure you ask some questions here so we can get to you and give you some personalized attention um so we've only got a couple minutes so yeah throw yeah. out some questions before shep tunes in and actually we we have a uh shep has to uh the reason i've been looking at my cell phone is because we have to move him around a little bit so uh, we'll see. I may go. I may go for the next hour. Um, but tell me a little bit about. So if I go to this guy, now you have a welcome to your YouTube channel video. Now, I don't right. see a lot of people do that. Tell me about that. Yeah, you know when somebody finds your channel, um, a video just telling them what what type of content you're going to share yeah. is um, a great way to welcome people to your your YouTube channel. I've never gone down the path of. Because you can, you could spend a lot of time really building a YouTube audience. And again, depending on your brand, you may want to spend more time on this social channel than others. But um, you can go and follow other people on YouTube who are potential clients for you. And then you build this whole social network on there. We really use YouTube to house answers to questions. And then we, we upload the videos natively to Facebook. We don't use the YouTube link because you get more reach if you share on Facebook. Facebook almost, um, they probably would say they don't, but I always think Facebook penalizes you for posting a YouTube link on Facebook. It's, ah, like, it's like putting your old boyfriend's clothes and asking your husband to wear them out. Um, right, you know, right. So 
YouTube um, is, Facebook is directly competing with YouTube for video hours, and so you load your video file into Facebook, but then load it onto YouTube as well. Uh -huh. and, um, same thing with Facebook Live. We'll do a Facebook Live, download that video, and upload it onto YouTube. So you have it both places. Great idea. And where do you find the tags and the transcription? That's all in here. How the do you edit in the edit area? So oh, okay. um, yes, okay. you'll see it on your own channel. When you go in to edit your video, you want to make sure you put lots of tags. And I think you can put probably 30, 40 tags in there. Um, there's space for them. So you know, use more space than you think you can. And then have links in there to things. Um, after you're done with your video, go back and look at them. And do I have a link to, to uh, like, for example, one of our most popular videos is how do I create a Facebook page without a personal profile? Everyone wants to know how to do that. And I get lots of clicks on that video. So I then created a guidebook on how to set up your Facebook correctly, which is a planet. Remember my whole analogy, it's a planet. And then I make that a landing page to capture their lead. Um, and then I put that at the end of that video because we got so many um, people asking questions on that video. I thought, okay, we need to have something there to answer their questions. Download this guidebook and it'll answer all your questions. They download the guidebook. We now have them in a Facebook marketing campaign. So um, yeah. looking at the analytics for videos and then going even deeper. Well, Gina, I just want to thank you so much. I, I hope we dug in for everyone. We have 28 people on right now, which is awesome. Um, I just want to thank all of you. If you, how do we reach you, Gina? If I have some additional questions, how do I reach you? Well, obviously, you could any at Gina Shrek is is easiest um, on anything. But yeah, social connects. We have a we have a Facebook group with lots of sharing and and um, tools and things shared on there. That's DIY social. Mm -hmm. Facebook.com. They do facebook.com slash groups slash DIY social. And I see a couple questions. Sorry, I didn't see these. Go ahead. Um, any suggestions for organically increasing keyword density within a post? Yeah, right. I mean, you want to write for humans and write. But I always say making sure your, your keywords in your title. Make sure it's in the first paragraph. Make sure your image that you load has an alt tag with that keyword. Make sure your um, blogs you're using the meta description area and the meta tags so that you're putting your keyword naturally throughout there. And again, if you're answering a good question that people would ask, it's probably going to have a natural um, organic keyword use in it. Right, right. Well, don't go too overboard or it doesn't sound, it just sounds weird. Um, and what would my number one thing I would suggest doing? Uh, I don't know what your business is, but um, I would say like on Twitter, Create an account and follow 25 thought leaders in your industry. Just follow smart people and see what they tweet about, how often they tweet. That's usually what I like to do is find somebody on these platforms. How often are they posting? Um, what's, how's it working for them? Um, looking at that, asking my customers what social platforms they're on, which ones do they like. Right. And building the strategy from there, it would be something I would start, I would do before I jumped in and created a uh, platform and then again always a lot for who's gonna write the content because right, you need right. to have people writing that content uh, on a regular basis so Gina we're gonna have to wrap up we're at the end of our time here babe but um, I just so appreciate your help and those of you who have additional questions for Gina you can email her at Gina at socialconnects.com and I'm sure she'd love to have you fill up her inbox. <laughs> exactly. Absolutely. Any question at all. Um, and I'll, I'll answer these questions in, in the chat um, by text. But well, stay on if you like, Gina. But thank you so much for being here. Yeah. I'll, I'll jump out of the screen here. Okay. Awesome. Thanks, Gina. Bye-bye. We appreciate Bye. your time. Okay, everyone, that was great, wasn't it? I just love Gina. She's just so, such a huge wealth of knowledge and she just really has kept me, uh, you know, I'm not a youngin anymore, but she keeps me on the, on the hip and happen inside of social media. So I highly recommend that you um, check her out. She's a brilliant uh, speaker and educator and author. So I just think she's just amazing. So guys, I'm gonna ask for five minutes, stay on. And the next presenter is gonna be um, SEM Rush. They're gonna come in. And we're gonna profile one of my favorite tools. So if you've ever wondered, why does that competitor rank under a keyword that I wanna rank under and what are they doing? This tool is going to be a game changer for you. 
It's SEM Rush, and I have a free 90-day um, trial that I can send to you that you can use right after this webinar series. So I'm going to go ahead and get, uh, get Paul on the phone, and then we're going to get going on his uh, interview. So thanks for joining us, guys. Here's Paul, and we'll be right back. We'll see you in a minute. Stay on.